Hey, Ruben, are you ready for this? I don't know, man. <laughs> I'm not well, sure. Maybe, maybe the real question is, uh, Neil, are you ready for this? I'm born ready. Are you ready? Como dice Marie Curie, en la vida no existe nada que temer, solo cosas que comprender. Recuerden, Curie, buscar la manera de aprender que más le divierta. Andy Grant Tyson dice, nadie que es curioso es tonto. Las personas que no hacen preguntas permanecen ignorantes el resto de su vida. Y para ustedes, esto es curiosidad científica. Buenas, Curio de Curiosidad Científica. Bienvenido otro día más a ¿verdad? este programa, el podcast donde conocemos las maravillas del universo. Y les habla aquí su host, Agustín Valenzuela. Y al día de hoy tengo el honor de compartirlo con mi co-host, que también es eh, host de su canal de YouTube, que tiene su mismo nombre, Rubén Amé. Rubén, ¿cómo tú estás? How are you, Agustín? You, you good? I am good, but uh, where are we speaking in English? I would think today is a really big day for both of us, and you know it. And humbly, maybe for Puerto Rico. I've been twice to this podcast, and I, I thank you for that. And I'm always mind blown by all the facts, all the science facts that you uh, give me and the educational information. But this time, we, I think we both are going to be mind blown yes. by the presence of the astrophysicist, planetary scientist, author, science communicator, the rock star, <laughs> Dr. Neil deGrasse Tyson. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh I, can't, I, 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 can't, I can't even tell you how honored and, and anxious I am. I, I feel right now to have you here, Dr. Tyson. Well, no, wow. no, I, thank you. Thank you for the invitation. I was I'm pleased that it could fit into my schedule, which is overstuffed. Wow. But oh, the, yeah. the themes and topics you wanted to talk about are very important. And so totally, I'm all in there for you to just talk about science, because that's what you do. That's what you want to do. And other issues related to science, because not all science is without issues. Yeah, <laughs> that is correct. Mean. That's yeah. completely correct. Uh, and actually, and now that you bring that, then uh, one of the main things that we want to talk today in Curiosidad Scientifica podcast is, uh, uh, you know, a little bit about the trage tra tragedy that happens in the radio telescope. And I'm going to do like a little history, pretty brief, and uh, with the radio telescope, like their beginnings that they were uh, in 60s uh, by uh, Cornell University and the Department of Defense, then around 70s, then uh, Department of Defense uh, dropped that to the NSF, right, uh, National Science uh, Foundation, in collaboration with Cornell still. Uh, then the beauty of that, like around 70s, 73, uh, the great Carl Sagan uh, and Drake, they start studying a little bit about, uh, you know, uh, signals or, or things like that uh, uh, in the radio telescope. Then a little bit of problems happens then after around 2005, when uh, the NSF uh, start kind of defunding the radio telescope. And then after that, everything kind of went down all the way to 2006 that um, then uh, Cornell will start to giving up, I maybe should say, and then uh, it was taken for Anaheim Mendes and another companies to take care of the radio telescope. Then year after year, uh, after that, all the way to 2018, we have uh, uh, the University to, of Florida who take over with a young company to see, maintain the telescope. And then as we know, then by 2019 to recently in August, we have like the first main issue with the radio telescope. And then after that, uh, in at the beginning of this month, something terrible happened that we're gonna see in a second in here if 
Irwin, can you play and roll that video for me? That was a China one. Uh, yeah. I wanted to to point uh, to say that early this month, uh, you uh, reacted to this event that happened, and while they while they put the video, I want to quote uh, what you posted on Facebook earlier this month, and you said, and I quote, "This is what happens." when space aliens discover your eavesdropping on them. <laughs> or instead, maybe it's what happens when a country regresses in its urge to lead the world in science. Neil, can you please talk what you meant by that? Well, that's a stunning video there. With the it is so the, heartbreaking. Of the God. receiver. And so, So this issue is more complex than most people know, right? If you just look at that image, it's 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 the sign of neglect that we're just regressing. That and oh, here the cables will snap. Watch this. Yeah, yeah oh, there they yeah. go. I think this was this image the most impactful. Uh, to be clear, people that are saying, "Oh, they let it fall, whatever," why they had a droning on on site, uh, they they already knew. Yeah, because the funders were not uh, being given. It, it yeah. was a uh, it was meant to be. Okay, so uh, so it's more complicated than most people know. Mm -hmm. So if I can give a little bit of backstory here, yes, yes sir. please. So in, it, my field is highly coordinated relative to other sciences. It could be because we're relatively small. There might be 10,000 of us in the world. Whereas if you ask how many electrical engineers there are, there's like hundreds of thousands of electrical engineers or millions of medical doctors or, or you know, hundreds of thousands of physicists. There aren't many astrophysicists. So we know each other, we respect each other by and large, and we all want to do what's good for the field. In that spirit, we have something called senior review. And a senior review are the most respected among us. It's a panel, okay? These are people who are highly published, made great discoveries. They're honored, respected, decorated. They gather, okay, at regular intervals. And the only point of their gathering is to decide whether something that has done great things, but the great things are in its past, do you continue to fund it? Or if you have limited monies, redirect those funds to a new project that's asking new questions with new technologies. It's called a senior review. And as painful as it is to look at something collapse or be dis decommissioned or as painful as that is, the bigger picture, what's going on in the bigger picture is that monies that used to go to that are going to other projects that are new, that are exciting for our next generation that are, and, and so that's the, that's the very hard balance. It's mm -hmm. not even a balance. That's the hard flow of decisions and how decisions and how money gets attached to decisions. Okay. So a senior review of Arecibo said the, while the work it's doing is important, it doesn't have the level of importance of these other projects we want to pursue, like the James Webb Space Telescope, the follow on to the Hubble, like missions to Jupiter and to Saturn, like um, other telescopes that were being built. There's the, 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 The Atacama Large Array in Chile, okay? The Alma, uh, it's called. And so, so these monies get directed. The next generation go there to get their thesis work done. And so the government then pulls out and redirects. And if anyone wants to come in, then they can. And for a brief while, they did. But mm -hmm. there's a limit to how much that could be sustained. Consider that the Arecibo telescope is 60 years old. Okay, how many, how much technology do you have 
that you still cherish that's 60 years how just tell them tell, tell me are you something in your house yeah. maybe you have yeah. an old typewriter well it's in the corner because it's kind of quaint right yeah <laughs> I, 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 and I'll, an iphone only lasts like one a year okay you know i say gee that oh, iphone one was really rocking it when that came out <laughs> yeah but think about it like like an investment that is a 60 year investment a 60 there is year, nothing okay. And, and there is course, no investment that is that long. Okay, and this began in the early 2000s, so it really was a 50-year, if you want to sort of get the time. Uh, the away. full science, yeah. But still, science. that's half of a century, okay? Yeah. You realize what happened between, you know, 1903 and 1969, that's about a half a century of time. We went from the Wright brothers to landing on the moon. So, so I'm not here to defend the collapse of 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 art of of Very engineering simple. that's not what i'm here to say what i'm here to say is step back for a moment and look at the bigger picture what would you do with limited money and there are new ideas coming up with new technologies new computing new everything and you have old things so you can say let's preserve everything and then the field does not advance so this is the very hard decisions. And that's why we only chose the highest ranking among us. Not because they have power of rank, but because they have power of respect. And we know if they come out of that room saying, look, we got to close that, but we'll reopen this, you, you're going to hate it. But at the end of the day, you got, you, you respect it. Okay. None of this stops private enterprise from coming in. If you have private money and you want to maintain, go right ahead. And it's only for the government monies that are so heavily contested that these allocations uh, end up uh, going the way they do. So, yes, there's a drone that filmed that. So we knew. It's not like, oh, my gosh, quick, get the drone. To... No, no. Mm -hmm. This was like the, the collapse of that structure was known. Mm -hmm. All right. So. I don't want to do all the talking here because I know you probably have questions. Yeah, but, go ahead, go ahead. Go, you, go ahead, Neil. You will, you, you are, you're, you, you're, yeah, you're answering some questions while you keep going. While so I keep going. Okay. So you, you make my job way easier. So usually <laughs> I talk too much. <laughs> okay, now here is what the senior review does not review, okay? Mm. okay. What they don't look like, what they don't think about, because it's not their charter, to think about it. What they don't think about it is how important is the fact that there's this major research observatory in Puerto Rico? Mm -hmm. Okay? How, how important one, is that? That was one attract, of my questions. You want to attract a next generation? And, and, and you, if, if you're some child in Puerto Rico, which has its own problems going on now with the economy and the hurricane, still recovering <laughs> from the hurricane. So, so it's got issues. Maybe there's some shining light that can be held up in the middle of all of that. That's a social cultural decision that the senior review does not consider. Okay. And so, and how about other things? For example, um, well, uh, what will this do to American leadership in that subject? Well, we are investing over here where we know we are already leading and we can lead it more. Okay, we can think about it that way. But there is a radio telescope, an array, it's called the SKA, which is, that's the abbreviation, which was made by the Europeans, which doing a lot of the science that the Arecibo telescope had previously mm. owned. Okay, science that relates to pulsars, other radio transmitting um, uh, yeah, objects, objects in the universe. Uh, Arecibo was very important in the early days of pulsars, finding where they are on the sky and what they look like and characterizing them and, and, and the like. And let us remind ourselves, which, which Rubin, you said at the introduction, this telescope was funded by the Pentagon, all right? Coming out mm -hmm. of the 1950s, the Cold War, the Russians figure out how to put warheads in intercontinental ballistic missiles, and we worry that maybe they're gonna have a warhead that has a decoy, and all of our armament is gonna protect that, and they're gonna have a real one that comes through. Th that telescope was conceived 
to track decoys through the ionosphere. Uh -huh. That's why if you look at the original name of the Cornell department that ran it, it was the, the, uh, the ionospheric observatory. The ionosphere is that layer, you have audience probably knows this, but just in case, there's a layer in high up in the atmosphere mm -hmm. where the, the, the molecules and atoms are ionized. So the electrons are stripped away. Okay. And so you have a, 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 a sea of electrons and the, the, and the molecules that they came from moving separately from each other. What that means is, okay, is that you have an elect, you, you have an electrically sensitive layer of the atmosphere. You could take radio waves and bounce them off the atmosphere there because the radio waves will see these charged particles and react with it in a way that it reflects. So, so for example, I don't know, you guys are young. I'm an old man. So you won't, rem <laughs> you won't remember this. But for the old timers in your audience, when we had radios, we had AM and A FM radio. AM. Yes. Okay. All right. I'm going to tell you something. Do you ever notice, if you were curious, that after the sun set, you could receive more AM radio stations than when the sun was up? But regardless, you could get radio stations from farther away on your AM dial than you could on your FM dial. That's because mm -hmm. FM had the, a frequency that did not reflect off the ionosphere. And it escaped the atmosphere and went into space. Whereas AM, that frequency, interacted with that electron layer and it bounced. So you could have radio signals from be beyond the Earth's horizon to you, beyond the curvature of the Earth, reflect off the ionosphere and travel 1,000 miles instead of just 100 or just uh, dozens of miles. So this ionosphere has radio properties. Mm. That that not only reflected AM, but gave a signature for intercontinental ballistic missiles moving through it at hypersonic speeds. Yeah. So that's what started it. Did, exactly. did, did people say, let's build an observatory so we can inspire kids and so we can do something? No, that, that wasn't it. <laughs> no. It was the, I don't want to die driver. Okay. No, that, actually, actually, Neil, I, don't, I, I think you already know this, but the reason why Puerto Rico, we have American citizenship. One of the reasons was so they can recruit them to go to war. Yeah. yeah. We have we have been uh, in, in this <laughs> scenario before where uh, this if it's for uh, military the, the purposes government has used it for yeah for, for military purposes. And generally But, when if there's a military objective, money flows like rivers. That's right. Actually that's in your book got built and yeah. of course the cold war got old and it wasn't necessary the military pulls out but now we have this telescope so it had great astronomical applications all right so um to make a long story short mm -hmm. i think you cannot at this point expect the scientists to band together and say save our recibo because we've been through that review the motivation has to be deeper and broader than just the small community of astronomers who are trying to make the next discovery. You can talk about the value of science in Puerto Rico and what the, you can point to that and say, this is high level science, right? And you can uh, compare it with other things, you know, people cutting coconuts and selling pasteles on the corner and you've got a <laughs> telescope there. Okay, and you say we got it all. Okay, <laughs> we, yeah. You, you you mean like we we can sell it like as a tourist attraction too? Well, no, I, that as well. In fact, my, when I first visited as a child, because my mother is 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 mainland born Puerto Rican, her parents yeah, yeah. Are, are from Bayamon and Arecibo. Okay, uh, Bayamon. <laughs> and so I regret I. I Do not speak Spanish. I'm embarrassed by that. <laughs> not even a word. I, I, no, I, I can pronounce Rico. good words. Okay. Huh? Rico. Rico. I, I can Puerto pronounce Rico. good. Okay. <laughs> I think your mother. Uh, she 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 had to uh, reprimand re she... reprimanded you in Spanish. No, no. Did, the did she was... throw you a, a flip flop when you no, did? No, here's the thing. 
He was a first generation born mainland in New oh, okay. York City at a time when you had to suppress everything. Your language ethnic. a little yeah. bit. Oh, yeah. oh, everything yeah. was suppressed. And oh, that was wow. expected of you. And you there was no English as a second language back then, or yeah. you know, just you know, sink or swim, you went straight in. So um, so all I'm saying, so I have a sensitivity to the island. I uh, still have friends and relatives there. Uh, and I don't get back as often as I should. But we used to go every year and uh, during the holidays, during this time of year. And um, so, and we, and we took a visit because they knew I was kind of interested in science and the universe. Mm -hmm. So we drove and there we were. And this is, I say the pastelas because I'd never forget. There was a pastela stand ah. right there <laughs> at the base of the mountain. <laughs> and it was like, wow, I, I should take a picture of this. <laughs> yeah. And, and so, uh, of course, it was located in Arecibo because that's a natural crater in the ground. And the telescope is, you don't steer the dish, you move the receiver. Yeah. And because the dish will focus light from different parts of the sky to different parts above it. And that's why the receiver had these struts holding it and there were these uh, tracks along which it would move. So now so the that largest- was the main, I'm, so, I'm sorry, Dr. Tyson. So that Dr. was the main- Neil, please. Call me Neil. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you, thank you. So Neil, that was the main reason because it, it was just like a lucky spot that have like the perfect uh, structure to put a plate in there. That was the reason that we choose a receivo and not El Junque or somewhere Correct. else. Correct. So uh, it wasn't just let's put it somewhere in Puerto Rico because we owe them or whatever. It was there's a there's a crater just the size that we want. And I don't know enough geology to explain what is the geophysics of that crater, but it is a it is the same kind of geologic uh, depression that China found in its landscape to build their single dish telescope. The fast. Okay? The fast telescope, the 500 meter aperture spherical telescope. I was there two summers ago. Uh, wow. We filmed there for Cosmos, in fact. Oh. And that is, there it is. That is currently the largest telescope in the world and it's in china that is one mile in circumference <laughs> okay it's a mile and so what all, what that means is if aliens are going to talk to humans the chinese will be the first to hear them that's all <laughs> yeah they have a bigger ear but talking about that neil talking about that they have a big uh, bigger uh, uh, ear but it was something pretty nice about the uh, Arecibo telescope, and it's that we could talk to. Thank and I think that's I, the I huge difference. That the signal. Very important. Thank you for making sure I didn't forget to mention that. Arecibo had a unique capability of you go. So think about it. If you have a telescope that collects light, in this case, radio waves, mm -hmm. that's a form of light. Uh, radio waves are not sound. We convert it into sound, all right? Radio waves is light just the way light. red is light and microwaves and ultraviolet. It's all light on what we call the electromagnetic spectrum. Give so, me one second there, one second there. Irwin, can you put the picture so people know what we're talking about? The radio wave uh, picture? I'm sorry, Neil, go ahead. Perfect. Yeah. So there's the entire electromagnetic spectrum. And it's very cute there in the middle. You, it says visible spectrum written on top of the mm -hmm. red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet. But the point of that is to see how narrow our human eyes detect. Yeah. Right? We nothing. generally <laughs> praise our vision as the most important of our five senses. But given all of the waves that exist in the universe, we are practically blind. Mm -hmm. And so you go to the far left, you have radio waves. And then you come, march in from the left, you have radio waves, then microwaves, where you have the cell phone. And then you have uh, infrared. And then you go visible light, and then you get ultraviolet, and then x-rays, and then gamma rays. You have that radiation warning on the far right. All of that is light. And we have telescopes conceived and invented to detect the universe in each of these bands. The early telescopes were only visible light telescopes. But we've got stuff in the universe handing us gamma rays and x-rays and radio waves. And here we are thinking Galileo is understanding the universe, but all he's doing <laughs> is looking at light that your eyes can see. Yeah. That's why it wasn't until 1967 where pulsars were even discovered. 
they give off primarily radio waves. If you're only walking around with binoculars and a regular telescope, you wouldn't even know those objects existed. Yeah. So this telescope, and the bigger the telescope, the dimmer the object you can detect. So now watch, let's get back to the comparison of Arecibo and the fast telescope in China. China. So the light comes in and then it gets focused to a detector. And then you, you uh, bring that down to computers and you analyze it. What Arecibo could do was you go to the detector and you turn it into a transmitter. You in you, you change what it, it is. Kind of thing birds, yeah. And it beams a signal out from that location to the dish and then sends a signal out into space. And so that is, it had the capacity to send signals. So... Arecibo was the first telescope to try to send a signal signals to aliens, as you in your introductory remarks noted. In the early 1970s, um, it sent a signal to the a cluster of stars in our galaxy called Messier 13. It's a cluster of like 100,000 stars. And so I think that we, we don't know any one star that we should uh, target. So let's send a signal <laughs> to 100,000 stars. <laughs> Neil, I, I have a question that I always uh, think like they, they, they always say that they can detect the asteroids that are maybe are uh, menacing the Earth. That it can thank you. That are a threat. That are a threat. Are a threat. Thank you. Thank you. So <laughs> the value of being able to send signals out and receive signals is, well, suppose an asteroid is out there that has our name on it, okay? <laughs> As this expression goes, all right? It's an asteroid that says, I'm headed for Earth. Ooh, okay, well, we wanna track that. Well, asteroids aren't very big and they're not very reflective of visible light. So you might be able to track it for part of its orbit, but then it goes behind the sun and you miss it or it goes too far away and it's too dim. Most asteroids, we only see for a tiny part of their orbit. And many asteroids, we don't have good orbital solutions for their paths. So when we say there's an asteroid that has a 5% chance of hitting Earth, shouldn't your first question be, why don't we know for sure if it's gonna hit us or not? Why is this down to probabilities? Come on, an orbit is an orbit. We got Newton's laws, come on now. Okay, the Apollo astronauts didn't have a 5% chance that might land on the moon. They were going to land on the moon. It's all the same equations, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. But we don't have good data. So one way to get good data is to take a radio signal, beam it from Earth to the asteroid. The asteroid reflects the radio signal back and you time it. And you know how fast radio waves go. Mm -hmm. Radio waves are just light. Light. They go at the speed of light. And we know the speed of light pr precisely. So you beam it and it comes back. You time the delay. Now you know where it is in the sky and you know exactly how far away it is. So your orbital parameters become perfectly solved. And when you do that, you will know, guarantee whether an asteroid is going to hit you or not. Right now, no telescope in the world can do this. So maybe if you needed a good excuse to resurrect Arecibo, you would say, let's rebuild it and make that be its entire task. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I, I want to play the... Then it's not just an extra thing it sort of does pretty good. It's the thing it does best and it will be useful forever because we don't ever want to get slammed by an asteroid. Okay, Neil, I want to play the devil's advocate right now. I'm this person that we're trying to reach uh, his funds and he says well yeah but i've seen so you're Arma a congressman right and now right? that's yeah i'm a congressman right now and i'm saying hey yeah uh i like it but i've seen armageddon that's just a movie i don't think an asteroid is gonna be a threat to planet earth because yeah. we have been living this whole thousands millions of years and it hasn't happened to try it like that what okay. would be your answer my answer is, <laughs> okay. well, here's my answer, you ready? Yes, sir. Okay. 
So I'm facing the, you're the member of Congress. So I'm facing you right now. I am. Okay? I am. <laughs> Here's what I'm going to do. Yes. Okay. If you say, look, I saw Armageddon. It's just a movie. This isn't real. Bruce Willis saves the world. That's Hollywood. Okay. And I'll, you just told me that. So then I'll look, I'm going to turn 180 degrees away from you. Talk to that member of Congress's electorate and say, you elected this guy? <laughs> <laughs> you put this guy in office? <laughs> okay. It's not his fault he's in office. People voted for him. Okay. If it's a guy, they voted for him. Vote him out. It's not his fault he thinks that. It's the voters' fault he thinks that. That's so, great. As an educator, I would educate the public to understand the risks of asteroids. And when they do, there is not a chance such a person would ever be elected to represent them. Beautiful. Beautiful. Let me let me ask you something. Uh, we, we might have to go a little uh, back uh, because there is a, a beauty about the this kind of telescopes, uh, especially the Arecibo one. And it's, uh, you already said what happened when you have AM radio that it bounces, but then it's something special about radio that that goes through uh, stuff and that was one of the main reasons why we have this telescope because for the wavelength of radio can go through stuff in space and yeah, ec very excellent and important point and thanks for making sure that i would get to talk about that yeah explain uh, a little bit work. how that work man you guys are good man <laughs> we try we try <laughs> neil we've been this past three days for four hours each night after work just just researching we have Doing contacted people in a receiver in yeah. I, I, like agustin he's a very he's very uh how you say very devoted to science i am a, mm. a fan i'm a big fan i'm a communicator but i really appreciate i respect and i love science <laughs> so, I, so, I love, so yeah we, 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 we've, done, we've done some research <laughs> okay so so here you go um again the uh, First, a comment to the old timers. You might remember the day when a television was this box I and was it there. sat in I your living there. room and, and it had antennas and they were called rabbit ear antennas. Okay. And the role of these antennas is to grab radio waves from the air. Okay. That's why they said we're now on the air. All right. Oh. On the air meant they're broadcasting radio waves through the air and it reaches these these antennas. Oh, by the way, mm -hmm. radio waves can travel fine just through the vacuum of space. Exactly. It doesn't need air. So what they really should have said, on the space, but they didn't. It says, <laughs> on, the, on the space. <laughs> okay. It's just, it's a misnomer, but fine. All right. So the reason why the rabbit ears were about that long is because that's the size of the radio waves that they were trying to grab from the air. Okay, the antenna typically is the length of the wave that you're trying to grab. So the old style walkie talkies had little stubby um, uh, antenna. antenna about this big. And it, it, that's about the size of a microwave. So walkie talkies use microwaves mm -hmm. to communicate. All right, now, now why am I saying all that? Because when you're a wavelength that big, you don't even see a wall that is smaller than that. So you're not even thinking, here I am in my apartment with a box on a table in front of a wall, and I'm receiving radio waves coming from outside my apartment building. The radio waves don't even see the walls. The walls are transparent to radio waves. In just the same way, glass is transparent to visible light, but your wall isn't. You say your wall is opaque, opaque to what? All right, oh, it's opaque mm -hmm. to visible light. Mm -hmm. But radio That's why waves and microwaves can get through. You guys are in a studio now. You right. probably don't have windows, or if you do, they're closed, yet your cell phone can ring. Why can your cell phone ring? Microwaves are getting through the wall. Okay, this feature of long wavelength energy, microwaves and radio waves, makes it ideal to penetrate deep, rich gas clouds in space. There's gas clouds all over the galaxy. That's It's gas clouds that make stars, because stars are made of gas. So stellar nurseries 
are very dense gas clouds. And if you want to, and, and so the, ga the galaxy is full of gas clouds that go completely across the disk. So now, if you want to communicate with aliens, you don't want to send them a beam of light that's going to get absorbed by the gas cloud or scattered by it. By the way, visible light will do just that. Visible light cannot penetrate those gas clouds, but radio waves can. That's why we didn't send signals to the aliens with visible light telescopes. We sent signals to the aliens with radio waves because if they're smart, they'll figure out that in the entire electromagnetic spectrum, if they want to talk across the galaxy, they better use radio waves. And so we're making an assumption about their intelligence in the same way they're pro they would be making such an assumption about ours. And so that's the value of radio telescopes worldwide. Beautiful. Uh, is there I, is there another plan uh, to do another radio telescope that we don't know of? Of we have only the the well, we the, have the James Webb coming to have the radio telescope. No, no. So there's no plans to build an in the in under American funding. There's no plans to build another single dish telescope. By the way, um, there are telescope arrays that are radio telescopes. So, for example, there's a there is a very large array of radio telescopes in New Mexico, and in my field we call things what they are. So that is officially called the very large array telescope. The <laughs> That's the beauty of physics. That's the beauty of physics. If it's uh, if it's matter and it's and we cannot see it, it's dark matter. It's if, dark it, matter. If, if it's a hole that we cannot see, it's, it, black, it's hole. Black, it's hole. black hole. It's a black hole. That's the beauty <laughs> of, of the physics. Universe, explosion, big bang. Big bang. Stardust. <laughs> Stardust. With one syllable. All yeah. of them. Yeah. <laughs> but we there, are there is... simple people. We are simple <laughs> yeah. people. Okay. That's better. That's better. But uh, it's way better. Way better. Uh, so. For, And so what yeah, just, we found go ahead, was go that if you put radio telescopes as steerable dishes, okay, and put them on tracks, then you can move them around and, and have different properties, and you can steer them to any place on the sky. Whereas a big, fat dish sitting in a crater, mm -hmm. yes, you can steer it over certain parts of the sky, and it rotates past because Earth turns, but it doesn't get to see all of the sky. So that's another reason why some of the value of our SIBO was was absorbed by other kinds of telescopes uh, that are out let there. Let me let me ask you this: uh, the Arecibo telescope, you know, like for Puerto Rico, is pretty much in the Ecuador, almost there. Is it a did Puerto Rico telescope in Arecibo receive a better signal than maybe China, that is maybe a little bit up north, or there is nothing because of the tilt of the earth, maybe at some point it will look whatever they want in the space. It's, you know, like, my question is like, it, the position of Arecibo was better than the Chinese one? So the farther south you are, the greater is the area of the sky that will rotate okay. past your, your, your telescope. So you, the way to think about this, imagine the Arecibo telescope was right on the North Pole. Just put it there. So the telescope and Santa Claus, there they are. And let's say mm. you put it off at an angle from directly overhead. Well, Earth will rotate and there'll be, a, there'll be a band, a circle that will rotate into the beam of the telescope. But that circle is not very large, right? It's just the little circle that goes around the North Pole and we still have bigger arcs that it could have taken, but it, can't, it won't. So the closer you are to the equator, as you look up, the swath of sky covers a much bigger area as the sky rotates by. So I don't remember the latitude of Puerto Rico. I didn't think it was all the way to the equator. I think it's a, a little slightly higher. But yes, yes higher, it's, higher. it's a little higher. It, yeah, maybe 10, 15 degrees maybe, but it is definitely higher, definitely closer Lower, to the equator closer, than, than in China. Than in China, yes. Yeah. Well, moving forward, because uh, we want to talk about uh, oh, other other thing, so, so, uh -huh. another thing, just a weird fact. Yes, sir. Sometimes, um, let's call it a tragedy that no one could support the Arecibo telescope. Sometimes tragedies um, have a force of, of, of solution unto themselves. Okay, so let me give an example. In New York City, 
we had Pennsylvania Station. It was a train station. And developers wanted to put a big, and it's a classic station, like from the early in the century, and it had sculptures and 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 design and 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 Gothic architecture. I don't know if it was Gothic, but it was, it was ornate architecture. And some developers wanted to put a big building there, and the train station would just become a place where there were gates. And they did. And there was a photographer that got in there and took pictures of all these smashed statues and the broken architecture. And there's a whole expose on this. And they said, is this how we're going to treat the artisanry of a previous age? That caused a complete outrage in New York. And the mayor stepped in and all the, the city planners stepped in. And thus was born the Landmarks and Preservation Commission. Beautiful. And so now if you're going to tear down an old building, you've got to make your case in front of architects, historians, um, uh, 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 politicians, people, and civilians who care about that. It doesn't mean you can't take anything down, but you can't just do it just because you want to put up a building. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so I worry that had we not lost Penn Station, this would have just continued, but sort of under the radar, right? You take down this other building and this other building, and this other building, and no one is paying attention until one day when it's too late. So the fact that we have explicit footage of this huge structure collapsing, it's like, oh my gosh. You know, I forgot the Arecibo telescope was there. You know, that was, I, yes. I bet some Puerto Ricans forgot. You know it, yes. okay? Yes. I forgot. Or don't even care. But, yeah, or didn't uh, care, okay? It's like, whoa. I don't want to lose a treasure. Let's rebuild it. And now you can get people to rebuild it. And I'm telling you, if you make it a thing that sends out signals, that, that'll lead the world in detecting asteroids that might harm us. And it'll lead the world in signals it sends to aliens. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, don't come and <laughs> kill us. Cool. Keep your distance. <laughs> you know, what? one time uh, I, I visited Arecibo and they, they make you fill in these papers that you can send uh, whatever you wanted to tell to oh, the message. aliens. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can write down what a message for the aliens. They cannot write down. What did you I, say? I don't remember. I don't remember. That. No. Because the aliens bad. are pissed off, I've heard. <laughs> <laughs> they came here and they destroyed uh, the, the yeah. communications. I, I, I provoked the, the first planetary war between <laughs> I, okay. I I I want to move fo uh, forward with uh with probably a little bit about your roots. We have beautiful people, uh, Latinos of all, all you know, like South America, uh, the other side of the of the planet. Or, but uh, especially like Puerto Ricans, like there is new missions like Artemis, and um, right now we know uh, a, a few weeks ago that Joseph Acaba is going to be going to the next mission. Uh, yes. And then we have beautiful people like the director of NASA, Dr. Marla Perez. And, you know, you have beautiful people from Puerto Rico and La Latin America and in general. Do you have uh, any contributions or have you worked with, you know, with, with Latinos or especially uh, Puerto Ricanos that, that are in your field or you, you know, you have make something with them, some story that you can tell us about, about <laughs> that. <laughs> I don't see color. <laughs> <laughs> but we are part of do this. Just do this and get out of here. Just Thanks, Neil. I love you. Thank you. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> uh, no, it's um, my field is very international. Mm -hmm. And so I, I mean that I don't see color. I'm half serious there. We are so international and I'm so accustomed to attending conferences and hearing 20 different accents. I don't then come up to them and say, where's your accent from? Tell me about where you're from. I just <laughs> right, don't do right, that. Right. We, we're you just scientists. Like with <laughs> and we do speak the same language and it's mathematics. So uh, I, did, I have not checked whether are they Colombian, are they uh, Chilean, are they... Um, uh, Puerto Rican, are they Mexican? I just haven't checked, and but I do know that there's a there's a slow. It's been slow, but there's been a real rise in Latin American presence in the sciences in general, and definitely in my field. And so, 
Um, so I think that's a good sign because they serve as role models. And you, if you become an astronaut, I want to be an astronaut because there's someone from my neighborhood or speaks my language or looks like me that yeah, cannot like be that. undervalued in this exercise of being inclusive so that the whole world participates in the future, not just a selected few. Yeah, and, and I wanted to ask uh, if the radio telescope would have uh, uh, contributed to this mission, Artemis, in some way? Uh, if it does, I don't know how. So okay. Artemis, just so we remember, is a Greek goddess. And the reason why it's called Artemis is very clever. There may be other reasons as well, but the one for me that rises to the top is that Artemis is, is the twin sister of Apollo. Mm -hmm. That's good. You see what they did there? Yes. Yeah. And now you can drop the mic. Boom. <laughs> but so that's good. So if you're going to sort of be inclusive and and not only emotionally <laughs> but gender wise, and so it's it's NASA's next mission to the moon. I think they wanted. They think they can send people to the moon by 2024. It feels a little soon to me. Yeah. Feels okay. A little, feels a little soon. Why is that? Especially, especially looking after the uh, James Webb Telescope mission. <laughs> yeah. I've been so excited. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> uh, just there's a lot going on. So, but uh, I think the idea of going back to the moon, by the way, between you and me. Yeah, that's right. If China says they want to put Taikonauts on the moon, okay. We will accelerate our Artemis mission. <laughs> we'll, we'll be there next week. <laughs> okay. Now, now you understand why. It doesn't I'm matter if the ship blows blows <laughs> over. Right? We, we are going. We're doing it. Yeah. yeah so yeah, the motivation that's... is what you know because is the moon the new high ground, for example, you know. And as you know, there's this ongoing tension, the United States and China. We're frenemies, really. It's I guess a that's the word. Uh, yeah. At the end of the day, it's a competition, right? We don't, want, we don't want them to get ahead of us, you know. So. Maybe that'll yeah. motivate people to do it. Well, fast. that's that. Know. Now you know, Ruben, why I was learning Chinese. I was doing uh -huh. some tricks there, yeah. sending uh -huh. some letters. You know? <laughs> when they come tell you a covered <laughs> bastard. <laughs> <laughs> Making some fake news in, in Chinese. So, <laughs> <laughs> trying to push this forward. <laughs> uh, so, so, Artemis, it's, it's always good to have some project there, sort of in arm's reach, or even a little bit out of arm's reach, just to keep you dreaming. So that we don't, you know, if I can go back for a minute, uh, Obama gave in one, I forgot which one of his State of the Union addresses, um, he declared that he wanted the next few years to be like a Sputnik moment, all right, where everybody galvanizes their energies and their dreams and their visions. And then he listed things he wanted accomplished in this Sputnik moment. And he said he wanted a high-speed internet for everybody and, and high-speed light rail and, you know, food distribution. And I'm thinking, no, that's not a Sputnik moment. The Sputnik moment shouldn't be, most of us have internet, but now we want everyone to have internet. That's, you don't use a Sputnik moment for that. <laughs> you use a Sputnik moment to dream bigger than anything you're doing yeah. at the moment. That's what Sputnik did for yeah. us at the time. You don't, you don't use a Sputnik moment to then do things you should have been doing anyway as a country, okay? And so, so yeah, we should have light rail that's high speed and high speed. Or yeah, yeah, don't credit Sputnik for that motivation, just do it. Yeah. So yeah. for me, um, it matters that there's a dream state because that's where creativity is stoked within those who have the power to invent and innovate and, and, and carry civilization forward, lest we just regress and just march right back into the cave, because that's where we're headed anyway. Wow. Okay. Uh, for those of you that don't know what Sputnik is, it was the first uh, ship or, or uh, telescope, maybe, that it was actually sent to orbit, right? Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, It was wrong, the Neil. first time anyone sent anything into space. orbit around the moon. In fact, the vocabulary wasn't fully developed at the time. So like the concept of satellite, you know, now uh, if I say satellite, yeah. you think of a communication satellite, right? Back then it was, so a lot of newspapers says, a lot of newspapers said, the Russians, the Ruskies, the Reds, you know, the Soviet <laughs> Union, 
launches a new moon around <laughs> Earth. Wow. Oh. Yeah, well, half, uh, half the newspaper said that. That's a natural satellite. That's the difference between it. That's yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, 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 it's a satellite, a moon, and natural. <laughs> not, a, not a natural moon. But now yeah. we wouldn't ever call it a moon, of course. But yeah, that was launched in October 4th, 1957. And yeah. the United States freaked out. You mm -hmm. know why we freaked out? Because what they launched it in, by the, it was just a transmitter that gave uh, beeps, radio beeps. So you can, with if you had a radio, back then there were, there were uh, amateur radio operators where you could hear signals. You could hear it beep as it went overhead. There were no laws about space space, space only airspace. Mm -hmm. You can't fly a plane in my airspace because I own the land and the air above it. But do you own the space above it? Space, no space. one even <laughs> thought about that. So now here's Russia flying over our... Okay. Over us. Oh my gosh. In our jurisdiction. Out of the jurisdiction. There's and, no jurisdiction up there. <laughs> and they put the, by the way, Sputnik, you know what it means? Translate it, it means fellow traveler. Okay, that's wow, innocent that's enough. That's beautiful. That's oh, beautiful. That's beautiful. Oh, oh, wait a minute. That radio transmitter was in the hollowed out shell of an intercontinental ballistic missile that was invented to carry nuclear warheads. So our military knew exactly what that meant. And we freaked. We, we yeah. forgive the expression, we lost our shit, okay? Uh, it's, <laughs> okay. okay. We, it's okay. Yeah, and, and, yeah, and, and, yeah and, and in that line, what the fuck are we doing going to Mars? <laughs> Always Artemis going from the moon and then there are, there, there are three phases. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. But but we are going to Mars eventually. That's the that's the that's the crazy one. That's, the goal. Well, that's what everyone said when we landed on the moon. Oh, we're on the moon in 1969. We'll be on Mars by 1985. Okay. That's what we do. If you think this is a linear path that is preordained, if you think that, go ahead. But it's not preordained. The okay. motivation has to be there, and the motivation to go to the moon, contrary to how so many Americans remember it. All right. If you say, why are we going to the moon? Oh, we're discoverers. That's in our blood. It's in our DNA. No. We went to the moon because Russia was going to go to the moon. And we were okay. scared. All right. War took us to the moon. Then we found out they're not going to the moon. and they're not. Then we stopped. And no, we didn't go to Mars by 1985 because it's not our curiosity that got us to the moon in the first place. So to say, are we ever going to go to Mars? Probably not unless we deem someone else's trip to the Mars as a security threat. And it's not a good idea anyway. There is, there is, uh, it's, it's beautiful when people uh, always come with the idea that in a hundred thousand years, we're gonna terraform Mars. We're killing our planet that is in perfect uh, uh, habitat. <laughs> you, you, you cannot take care of this planet and we, we are putting in crazy emissions up there, but you are going to terraform yeah, it's, the planet. It's, aud it's audacious to say <laughs> it Mars is. in case we trash Earth. So, so you can go trash Mars. Like yeah. what is your <laughs> So you're gonna reconstruct and terraform so you can destroy it. Yeah. What, what, what does it say that we have a perfect planet here and you're gonna take a hundred thousand years to take care of that and then destroy it again? Yeah, so I don't think we're going to Mars unless there's a geopolitical argument to do so not just because oh it's the next place to go no it's too expensive and it's too dangerous it is really dangerous. okay well uh i, I got you think, with, uh, a couple you, more minutes yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, and then we're gonna finish just with that with this uh in in your master class you have a quote that says this uh one of the greatest challenge in life is knowing enough to think you're right but not enough to know you're wrong. Relating to this, we were gonna ask you something about the radio telescope, but I think I'm gonna change that question to uh, what is actually, the, uh, on your belief, the next scientific revolution? Something like what uh, the internet is doing right now. Yeah, yeah, so because I, 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 wanted, I wanted to 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 point out that, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Neil, but it's, it, it, there's a video about David Bowie that said, don't, don't put it, that a uh, singularity disappear and that has produced such a medium as the internet because it gave these other angles that uh, a tv or radio was uh, 
was not given. It was we were just consuming one uh, one uh, pro uh, product. But the internet has gives, has given us uh, this other perspective, and we now bear the reality that we can see through other scopes. No pun intended. But the now that we know it, that David Bowie said that in 1998, now it's confirmed because of the social uh, media. What nowadays is that technology that we don't? really know that it's going to change the curse of of society that you might have an idea uh that it will have an impact maybe in 20 years oh yeah definitely it's the control of the human genome all right mm. we, we we are the product of millions of years of evolution as is every other living thing on earth today and that evolution happened by natural selection where the environment changes if you happen to have features where you don't die you mm -hmm. persist to continue your offspring if we don't have to rely on nature to adjust our genome and we have access to the genome ourselves that is a whole other universe that we are walking into so you're All talking right? about crispr's Yeah, CRISPR, as an example, that's you could do it cheaply and and, mm -hmm. and <laughs> efficiently and effectively. But so I see that as transforming. By the way, initially, I'd want to make designer drugs. So, so I read your DNA and I make a drug that is exactly for your DNA with no side effects. And it cures an immediate. I, for me, that's the great upside potential of this. The downside is, what do you, are you going to alter yourself? Are you going to... Um, do you like the piano so much you want to have kids that have six fingers on each hand so that they can play more interesting chords? <laughs> I mean, what? <laughs> so what? In, it's important, I think, that with that kind of technology and power over our human physiology on the horizon, we need to also develop a tandem uh, path of moral wisdom in the face of it. And so I don't know what the first step should be, but I know that there are places that can go that we all don't want. Yeah. Not only that, the, um, of course, I'm not the first and I won't be the last to comment on artificial intelligence in the way in That's which- That's what I want to go. Yeah, I just think um, if it gets really smarter than us, then it might keep us around because we are entertaining to it. <laughs> artificial yeah. intelligence can't play baseball, right? Or or football. So maybe uh, it loves Sunday afternoon football. <laughs> the AI does. So it keeps us around so that we can do these things that, that entertain them. And for those who don't, then you just become their pets. Wow. That's is, it, is that happening in the near future that such as 20 years? That the, the genome, the genome theory and the... You know, I put it within 20 years, definitely. Okay, and the, yeah. and the, And the AI uh, uh, making us dance for them? Tomorrow. Neil, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Alexa, right, shut up. <laughs> thank uh, you, Neil. This has been a pleasure. We love that you give us uh, your time. We really, really appreciate you. Excellent. Uh, and thanks for your being concerned about the telescope and the plight and, and, the, and the fate of Puerto Rico. And, and uh, this is important. People need to care. And when yeah. people don't care, things... Um, go wrong they go bad totally neil thank you uh through cosmos you have uh, taught me a lot about science i didn't study science but through you i have learned a lot about astrophysics and i'm very fun and interested in this uh, topic uh, to the extent that i bought your books and when my mother saw those books she's of christian beliefs she said <laughs> why are you reading those books do you don't tell, don't tell me you're becoming an atheist you're, no mom i'm just educating myself on astrophysics <laughs> <laughs> and then I called my mom last week and I told her, uh, mom, do you know who I'm going to interview? Hey, what? Who? Hey, and, and I said, Neil deGrasse Tyson. And, oh, that's the guy from the books you read? Yeah. Yeah, that guy. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> Why? You, you, you were, you're Go to just... my book on letters. Do you have that <laughs> yeah. book? It's Letters from an Astrophysicist. Many yeah. of those exchanges. Oh, I think he's got him all. Many I of those exchanges. Them all. <laughs> I, don't I don't have that one. Shit. I, I got yeah, yeah. so so it. In that, that one, one it's, well, it's 30 years one. of me communicating yeah, with the public, them writing to me with their 
with their angst and their challenges. And their, uh, in there are letters between me and religious people. You should go in there and see what those conversations look like so you can have that conversation with your mother. Uh, it's really Perfect. respectful. Uh, honestly, it's respectful. really, really respectful. It's beautiful uh, how yeah, you yeah, write to, to people that think different. Uh, yeah. yeah, something that you want to announce or something that people want to look you uh, or, or social media at all that you want No, wanna... just I, I tweet at Neil Tyson. That's all. And they have and another book. Other social media handles, I have the full middle name in there. So Facebook is Neil deGrasse Tyson. TikTok is Neil deGrasse Tyson. Ah, TikTok. <laughs> Instagram is Neil deGrasse Tyson. Right. But, but I'm not dancing for you on TikTok. No, uh, <laughs> no, you're training for the AI when when they when they rise to power. <laughs> nah, <I'm just> <laughs> All right. So, you have, do you have any book that is coming up uh, in oh, the there's near? There's one in the spring, um, yeah. but with we're holding back. We want it all to come out all at once. So, so that's okay. a secret now. <laughs> I kind okay. of know your secret because I consume a lot of you, so I kind of know. Okay, I'll, I'll leak a but... little bit of it here. So, in the spring, <laughs> yes. uh, there's a beautiful book coming out, I'd say it even if I didn't write it, uh, it's called Cosmic Queries. But it's not out yet. You can't get it. Don't look for it. Just, just called Cosmic Queries. And it's inspired by a very popular um, version of my Star Talk show, where people write in with questions, Cosmic Queries. And we talk about it, we have fun. And it's some of the deepest questions, like how will the universe end? And what what is the big rip? Will that, you know, and what and, and what was around before the Big Bang? And are there if what happens if we're not as smart as we think we are? Deep questions all threaded oh together in, oh in, a, in a in a in in an arc of learning and enlightenment and joy. So that's it's coming out in, in March. So. beautiful. Well, all right, guys. Thank uh, you. Thank you for everything. Uh, okay. Ruben. I'll see yeah. you, Neil. Bye-bye. We're out. Okay. Neil, Take care. Yeah, thank you, Neil. Neil, Neil is going to another interview right now. He's uh, he's in a hurry. This guy, he makes a, uh, a like a media tour uh, every day. <laughs> yeah. Every day. Like yeah. everybody it's, wants to talk to Neil. And you and this is evidence that why you want to talk. I think that it's we so can cool. speak in Spanish now. <laughs> ah, ah <laughs> shit, yeah. <laughs> ahora, ahora yo pongo, ahora pongo los subtítulos en, en inglés. Exacto, Mira, exacto. Pero para, para cerrar, eh, quería darle las gracias a Wilber Ruperto por darnos una información bien detallada de lo que es el Observatorio wow. de la por lo que pasó y en qué etapa está en este momento para así llevársela a Neil deGrasse Tyson. A Adrián Vague y Carlos Pérez, que fueron los que firmaron eh, el video del radiotelescopio cuando colapsó. Este, a Jody Solomon, que es la productora, es la, una de las racionistas de, de, de Neil, Ma, eh, Madeline Frisch, también por hacer esto posible, y que yo soy un presentado que me pongo a escribirle en Facebook a esta gente. Muy beautiful. Eh, no, ya tengo que agradecer. Y gracias a Agustín de... por, por el tiempo también. Gracias, gracias a ti, Rubén, por producir esto y, y traerlo en mi podcast, básicamente, eh, que tenemos, ¿verdad? Para los que no saben, o estamos en un co, ¿verdad? Un co y el productor de todo esto fuiste tú, básicamente. So, eh, bueno, creo que bueno, trabajamos bueno, súper bueno. duro para esto. Para la gente que no sabe, llevamos cuatro días eh, en preproducción. Y nada, este, todo el mundo, vayan y busquen a Rubén Ahmed en su canal de YouTube, donde, eh, ¿verdad? Eh, este fue el primer video, y digo fue porque... Básicamente, cuando lleguen a este punto, es que se acabó el video. Sí. Eh, y envíenselo a sus amigos. Eh, vamos a hacer crecer ese canal. Y vayan y búsquenme en Curiosidad Científica Podcast en Instagram y en Twitter. Y vayan y busquen mi libro, Curiosidad Científica, El Universo en Arroz con Habichuela. Lo voy a comprar y, en Amazon. Ajá, en Amazon. Y busquen mi podcast, obvio. Y los que lo están escuchando, pues gracias. Y los que están escuchando ahora mismo, eh, compartan este capítulo, ¿verdad? De Curiosidad Científica Podcast en todas las plataformas de podcast y lo logramos Rubén lo logramos a mí, a mí me pueden seguir en Instagram como Rubén underscore Ahmed aquí está escrito en Twitter tengo Rob underscore Tower este fuck Facebook in the face I tried ah y YouTube YouTube síganme aquí en, denle subscribe y voy, vamos a voy a seguir este entrevistando y espero que sean gente de este calibre pero vamos a seguir ah, okay. eh, eh, con con creación de contenido así de, de pesada. O sea, esa es mi meta. Quisiera tener invitados así de, de durísimo. Este, esta escala está, 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 está Yo creo que empieza alta. para el revés. Se supone que uno empieza abajo 
Y yeah. empezamos un poquito arriba. Sí, sí. Un poquito difícil pasar esa hora. Yeah. Y al pero, fin me puedo dar pero lo logramos. <risa> yo voy a dar la cerveza mía. Yo lo que tenía era agua. Pero, eh, yo yo te llamo ahora. ahora. Yo te llamo. Pero a todo el corillo, gracias. Gracias por escuchar. Y, y ya ustedes saben, seguiremos enseñando sobre ciencia. Y para adelante. Yeah. Check. Y para ustedes, esto es curiosidad científica.